Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to check out the Hornet King channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the removal and relocation process of an Aero Nest Building Yellow Jacket, Dulica Vespula Maculata, aka Bald Face Hornet. As a matter of fact, this Bald Face Hornet nest that I removed from a client's house and relocated to my property this past summer. I'm also going to give you guys the update of all the nests that I removed and relocated to my house this past summer of 2019, plus updates on the chickens and a squirrely squirrel and her babies. Here's the video guys, check it out. Alright guys, so this is a removal of a aerial nest building yellow jacket, Dolica Vespula maculata, aka bald faced hornet. Um, this nest had been higher up in this, uh, this bush that's here. Um, but as it got bigger and it got heavier, it pulled the branch down and it was pretty much resting right on the ground. Um, there had clearly been something at it trying to, um, to eat it, which I think is probably either a skunk or a possum. Um, but they were unsuccessful, probably got swarmed or something. Uh, so usually with my removals, I can um, relocate the nests if they're viable. So this being towards the tail end of the season, it wasn't full capacity of adults. So it would have been okay to, to relocate to the house um, just so I could have the, uh, the new queens and males hatch and, and mate and then start a colony potentially the next uh, season. So um, always trying to get nests to uh, start organically at my house. So I um, figured this would be a good candidate to relocate. So that's what I did. Um, just trying to get some angles here as to where the entranceway was. And since it had kind of collapsed onto the ground at one point, the hole was practically on the ground. I'd like to find a lot of nests on my property next year. <laughs> as long as you know what their your limits are next to them and whatnot. Like even mowing, like, you know, I mow next to mine and they don't give me any trouble. I mean, they come out and, I mean, I, I get up in their business. <laughs> you know, I get like within like six inches from the hole with my camera and, you know, they come out and do what that one just did. Like remember when it hit me in the shoulder? Uh -huh. They don't come out and do that. They'll come out and let me know that, okay, you're too close. And then I just back up. and. Because the first couple dive bombs are just warnings. They're not stinging you because they don't want to, I mean, they don't want to sting you more than you want them to sting. Right. You know? And they don't want to die. Either. Yeah, right. But, you know. Now, if it, if it just became like someone sets off the pheromone response, then forget it. Like, they're, they're not thinking about themselves anymore. They're solely thinking about what their instincts tell them, you know. All right, so first thing I have to do is raise it up off the ground. And trying to be delicate because I don't want them all to swarm out because even though this is the end of a season I really don't want all the foragers and workers to leave the nest because then if there are any larvae inside they're not gonna be able to be tended to so just trying to raise it up enough to where I can get the piece of tape over the entranceway yep. so a couple came out so you can see there's a few flying around but there's only probably about 10 there so Luckily, it wasn't a swarm. They were just kind of checking out as to why there was so much shaking going on. And being that this nest was dangling so low, it caught a lot of breeze, I'm sure, and they were probably pretty desensitized to vibration. So they're trying to strategically put this piece of tape on, and a few of them come off the side of it, and there was another little entranceway off the bottom, so it wasn't sealing it up completely. Um, however, that must have been the main entrance because they uh, they definitely weren't all swarming out of the nest. There was quite a few in there when I got it home. So now that it's closed up, I can easily snip the pole, well, snip the branch that it's on, and get the uh, nest bagged. There's been a fair amount of response because you can hear that they're clanking against the camera. They're trying to swarm but I was able to get the nest in one piece. Success. Yep, you got it. Man, they just don't even care about this spray that's flying right through it. And looks like something at some point has tried to get this nest there. There's some envelope kind of torn off in the ground. Could be that they uh, they got swarmed and scared off. All right, so nest number two that I relocated in my house. This was actually at a customer's house who did not want to be filmed. 
um, and didn't want the nest being filmed at their house, so I did a removal and uh, brought the nest back here to my property, and um, so you get to see um, there were quite a few it's still inside the nest when I removed it. I didn't do too much vacuuming, I basically just bagged it and brought it home. And you can see here all the extra envelopes that they have already put on. This is day three, and they've already pretty much engulfed the entire top part of the comb. And um, this is obviously sped up, so you're able to see everything happen from day to day to day. Each shot here that you're seeing is from one day to the next. Just a lot of activity, which is super awesome. And this is all new envelope that they had to build on because the envelope that was on the original nest had to be removed. So they did pull out some of the larvae, so some of the larvae didn't make it in the, in the travels, which is one of the reasons why I don't always relocate. And the swarm. They did not like my camera sitting there. <laughs> Well, when you relocate colonies, that's what happens. They get very sensitive to uh, to things being around them because they're they've been traumatized, kind of. So this is another colony that I removed for a client. This was on the side of their garage, and I just wanted to relocate it all together. I didn't want to destroy it, so um, wanted to bag it the best I could. I did vacuum a little bit beforehand, and just getting the vac, or getting the bag around it, getting it down all in one piece without uh, destroying or breaking up any comb um, and not losing too many of the foragers and workers. So there's only about like 20 that were left behind. So getting the colony home in the bag, um, you can see here that all we had left was the queen. There's the queen left over. I'm going to try to see if I can locate her onto one of my other nests. Wow, how the queen almost gets like a yellowish tint to her. All right, so I got done feeding a larva. Larva. All the ones I'm finding are alive. I was hoping to get a dead one. This is actually the gut of the larva. It's funny when you put the food down on them, their belly's like indent. Alright, so usually when I relocate colonies that I don't have a lot of workers to, I try to feed the larva before I actually hang them up. And that's what I did here. I went around and fed as many of the larvae as I could, so that way they weren't starving when new adults started hatching. And then I got the bright idea just to bond the two nests together. They pretty much just consumed an entire larva. So still feeding the, the many of the larvae as I could. Um, the other nest that I relocated just previously here in this video was just done not even three days, three or four days before this one. So bringing this one back I wanted to make sure that they had a queen because they didn't have a queen in the original nest, but this one had a queen. It's a queen. So I decided to bind the two nests together side by side so there was a queen on the one nest and workers on the other. Getting fluids from the babies. A little bit of a science experiment, but it totally worked out as you'll see a little bit later here in the video. That's the queen yellow jacket. So this colony was already sensitive to me being around with my camera there. You can see they're already starting to swarm. And then I put the, uh, the new nest up next to it. The queen's still in there. And so these, this nest adults are flying to both nests. And they're even starting to put some paper up top. So I'm excited to see what happens here. This is awesome. All right, so some updates is the uh, the nest has paper on it now, which is freaking awesome. Got all that paper envelope up there, and they got paper envelope down here. This literally just happened within the last probably ten hours. The 
queen still in here, which is awesome. I can't all tell right, you where she's at right now. There's a lot of activity. <laughs> all right, you can see already how much envelope has already been put onto this colony, or put on by this colony. And the uh, individuals that were in the left nest are now tending to both nests. A lot can happen in a day, that's for sure. So these companies that sell these um, these hornet nests to hang in your on your property and things to try to deter wasps, don't even bother wasting your money. Look at this. These are two separate colonies side by side, and they're tending to each other, working together. So don't waste your money on those deterrents. A lot more envelope. This is like day five for the right nest. So now at this point, it's hard to tell which workers are from which nest because the right nest workers as they were hatching were going in and out from both sides. This is one of the workers a couple posts down and she was chewing on the wood to try to make a more uh, cellulose paste to turn into envelope. She was chewing there for probably about 15, 20 minutes and then she'd fly back to the nest and paste all that on for the envelope. And look at that monster. Both nests merged together completely, encased in envelope. You can't even tell where the two combs were. I try to wait for a few of them to go into the hole, and then we'll uh, see if we can uh, get this thing in one piece. So this is the third and final nest, and I wanted to relocate this one behind my house which is about 20 yards away from where the other two nests were that I just showed. So it's, this nest was very, very healthy. This colony was in really good shape, so it was a good candidate to be relocated. So just putting a piece of tape right over the entrance way, try to keep as many of the workers coming out as I could, and then just snip down the branches. And unfortunately, the stragglers do have to be killed, but you know the nest itself, the, in, the majority of the colony is salvageable. So taking it, hanging it from the maple tree behind my house, behind my barn, and it was a huge success. Like I said earlier, when you relocate a colony, the colony then becomes very, very sensitive to any kind of vibration or movement or things out of the ordinary. Mind you, this entire colony is in a completely different environment than where they were when you put the tape on. So you see they're still swarming. <laughs> This went on for about 25 minutes, and then they settled down. But anytime I'd, I would put a camera up or anything near them, they would swarm for the first couple of weeks. That is not CGI. That is an actual wasp crawling on my lens while I was walking away with the camera. Look at that swarm. That's incredible. There's so the fourth and final nest. This is a relocation I did with Herc 1120. I think I'm just gonna just go ahead and bite the bullet and do it. Okay. Now I don't want the other one to fly out. Nah. I'm gonna wait for two to come back. So the idea here was just to just take. It was a very very new nest and just take it and just bag it and then put it in a glass jar, take it home with me, and then hang it up on a tree at my place. Easy peasy. It's high up though, and I'm terrified of heights. So. <laughs> so that's just um, regular 14 gauge wire, or 12 gauge wire, sorry. And just repositioning it here into the wire so that way it wouldn't fall down easily. And already they were starting to tend to it. This is day two. They built a lot of envelope on there already. Then they started building it onto the wire itself, which is pretty cool. 
So this nest actually lost its queen. So there were nothing but worker females in there until the workers started laying eggs. And when workers lay eggs, those eggs become male adults. So since there was no queen, there weren't going to be any new female sterile workers to be made. This is in the nest at 1 a.m. in the morning. I used my camera and a scope camera and was able to scope out the nest and watch all the uh, behavior from inside in the middle of the night. And this one didn't like the lens and the light, so she was biting at it. <laughs> and this is the finished product. Beautiful nest. As I had to share this. So this is the method in which I scoped the nest. So I mounted the um, camera onto this board and then so that way it's stationary. And then I put my camera like right in front, like right here, facing the screen and shooting that screen. So this is the this is the uh, camera. You can see. And then it has this. Um, let me turn it on. It's got really bright LED lights on it. But anyway, um, so I didn't film this nest at all today because I did a couple of removals. But uh, I wanted to show just how interesting this nest looks. Look how freaking cool! Like the colors are. Look at that! All these browns and whites and grays. This nest is absolutely gorgeous. Expecting it, squally squall. Better fluff up that grass, squirrely squirrel. You don't want any thieves to steal it. You've stuffed so many peanuts in that plant. And you stuff too many in there, squirrely squirrel. And you stuff too many in there, squirrely squirrel. All right, so we're feeding the babies. It takes a little bit of time, so I gotta work on the... Uh... All right, it counts four, 14, so if I kill two at a time, I'm gonna get babies. I have to uh, <laughs> take a lot of time with them because they eat slowly. It's your little baby. So, what had happened was, Humphrey laid her babies, or, yeah, laid her babies. Humphrey, um, had her babies in the greenhouse in the box that I built. However, she then moved them after about a week. 
and move them to my neighbor's house into his tree. Well, that tree is actually, uh, he's chopping that tree down. So I tried to move the, uh, the babies out and, um, put them back in the greenhouse. Humphrey came back in the next day. She had to move back in that tree again. So what squirrels will do is they will actually, um, they move their babies to about, they usually have about three different nests and they'll move their babies around. Um, so that way it kind of keeps other animals that might suspect that there's a nest somewhere kind of on their toes and not being able to get their babies, which is understandable. But, um, the greenhouse is the best place that she could have her babies. Um, so right now what I'm trying to do is I'm going to I'm going to keep the babies until my neighbor cuts his tree down. After he cuts the tree down, I'll put them back in the box. Humphrey will come back over. And if she wants to move them from there to a different tree, that's totally fine. Um, I just don't want, I don't want my buddy to have to wait for me to try to get those babies out of the tree when he's ready to cut the tree down. Or he might not remember at all and just cut his tree down with them in it. So... So since this is a bit time consuming, if you ever rehab baby squirrels, put something on your TV. Um, shout out to my buddy, Lack Attack 24. He does uh, a lot of different um, NES game streams, and I'm kind of a an old school sucker for old NES games. So Lack Attack, if you ever check out my channel, love your channel, man. Love watching your streams and your videos. So anyway, so put something on your TV that you can spend a lot of time just <laughs> just watching while you feed your squirrels. So since there's two babies here, this takes twice as long as what it did when I had Humphrey as a baby. Because so I raised Humphrey from a baby squirrel that was abandoned. And um, so the first thing you do when you're feeding them, you get them fed and then you take a damp damp uh, paper towel and you just go right up to their genitalia and you just wipe it and when you wipe it that in that kind of gets them to uh, to pee I mean this is you can take her out of the these are both girls it's just a little Focus. There you go. I think it's focused. So you gotta just take the take the cloth. Of, here she goes. I know. We're just. Oh, there's the pee. There's the pee. All right. So you just kind of wipe right right at the genitalia, right at the bunghole. There's some pee pee coming out of there. Kind of do that a couple times. Think. Urine coming out. I wish it would stop focusing on my face. And there's poop coming out. Perfect. That's what you want. You want poop and pee to come out. They can get constipated pretty quickly. You're peeing a lot. Holy cow, girlfriend. Oh, there's the turds. That's it. What? That's it. Look at all the turds coming out. That's what you want. If they get constipated, that can be bad bad news for them. Obviously. Well, bad news for anybody, really. I think you are done, girlfriend. She's done for now. Get her back in her box here. Our sister is. This one hasn't been eaten quite as much. So I've been trying to encourage her to eat a little bit more and trying to encourage her to poop a bit more too. So usually what I try to do when I first get started with them is uh, try to get them to pee and poop. Just stimulate a little bit. But I have noticed with her, if I sit her like this, hold her between my fingers, and then 
then try to stimulate her to poop. Then she'll poop. She, for whatever reason, she doesn't like being held upright to poop. So we're doing a little bit of this. She's hungry. So we'll get her fed first. And I alternate who gets fed first, so there's no favor to them. <laughs> but the key is definitely to go very, very slow. Because they try to suck it in. They try to suck it in, then they can aspirate. Just like, pretty much like that. And after they do start doing that, you have to hold them upside down so that milk can drain out of their nasal passages. Now she's pooping. Good. Good job, girlfriend. She's yawning. Come on, keep pooping. For whatever reason, she hasn't been wanting, hasn't been pooping as much as the other one. She, I don't think she pooped at all yesterday, and I was able to get her to poop today. She is. Oop. Already had breakfast. Oh, she's peeing. I haven't even stimulated yet. She's already peeing. So that's good. You want to get the peepees out. Enough with the fluids, Dad. I'm ready to eat. I'm hungry. I'm not your dad. I'm your grandpa. All right, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments, let me know what you think. If you have suggestions for future videos, something like to see me cover in an upcoming video, also drop in the comments, let me know. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so and hit that bell notification down below. That way you guys can update anytime I do post a video. Thank you so much for tuning in to check out my videos and supporting my channel, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Too much. Much. Too much.